Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to MOOC and PTL course on Bioengineering an interface with Biology and Medicine. Today we will discuss some deviations from Mendelian genetics where you will understand that not everything obeys Mendel's law. So, we have seen in, in Mendel case you know it was purple versus white and always only purple in the F1 generation and then they segregate again as the purple versus white. But there are examples like a, a flower which is uh, a red snapdragon, that flower if you do a cross, so in this case you have, these are the parental gametes, one is a red colored flower, one is white colored flower, when you are doing the cross from these gametes, it is forming RW which is neither red nor white and it shows the pink colored gametes in the hybrid and now when they do the cross from this, So, you got one red, one white and two pink, alright. So, this is not following the Mendelian law of dominance, right. It is not showing you that 3 to 1 pattern. At the phenotype level, we have ratio which is 1 is to 2 is to 1. In the Mendelian case, when we saw the law of segregation, where you observe this number 1 is to 2 is to 1, at the genotype level, right. When these numbers are shown, where these ratios denote genotypic ratios in which context or where it can be phenotypic ratio. So, for example, in the case of incomplete dominance, it is phenotypic ratio which is 1 is to 2 is to 1. If you have done the cross of the red flower versus white flower, the gametes which were produced from the FN generation of the pink flower, you did again a cross of that in the F2 generation. You have again a sperm and X from these two, RW, RW, you are doing cross one red, one white and two pink flowers were generated. The, phen the phenotypic ratio here becomes 1 is to 2 is to 1. Another characteristic which is very interesting is albinism, where there is some deficiency of uh, the colors which gives you the, the black shade and those individuals are having white hair and no pigmentation uh, is one of the, the lacking characteristics in those individuals, which is derived from some genes which are recessively inherited and they are going to only show up in the homozygous individuals. So, those individuals who are carrying it both a small a small a only they are going to show you the albinism property. So, let us take and please do a cross yourself now. If there are parents who look normal, but they are the carriers of this albinism property. So, parents are looking normal, but they might be carrying the alleles of this property of albinism, this disorder. So, they have normal phenotype. What would be the probability of their children uh, as a carrier for this particular disease as well as how many of them will be totally albino? I think genetics question is always good idea that you know things look very simple, but do it. Just make the crosses think about the what should be genotype, how should denote the gametes and then the cross will become very simple. Both the parents are carrier. So, it means the, the parents genotype will be what? Heterozygous it will be. So, they are looking normal in the appearance, but they are heterozygous, they are, they are carrier and when there is a one uh, recessive character, it is not going to show until it becomes homozygous recessive. So, now when you do the cross of the fourth child from this family, 
there is a possibility only one of them will become albino and two will be uh, actually carrier so three of them are looking normal but of those three two will be the carrier who will carry these genes again to the next generation this is how one could study these things in the in a given family and then try to make some sort of pedigree analysis that what could be the pattern of that and you see this kind of uh, you know pattern of albino child that you know who are uh, looking white lack of pigmentation in this child let's think about some more complex properties and something which is much more you know related to uh, you know all of us think about the blood blood groups i'm sure everybody would have you know gone to some clinic to know that what their blood groups are right these blood groups are derived from the same gene but multiple alleles and these alleles so let's say you know i'm sure you are aware of there are four different type of blood groups a b ab or o right and this nomenclature these names comes from some sugar some carbohydrates which are present on uh, on the rbcs so on the red blood cells uh, sometimes this carbohydrate a is present and that type of blood is known as blood group a or carbohydrate b is present that is known as blood group b or both of them are present that is known as ab or if both of them are absent that is known as o type so let's kind of you know start putting this in genetic terms so we are saying that a and b are dominant traits in this case right we are talking multiple alleles of a given gene so for a blood group capital i capital a is how you are denoting the a blood group b blood group capital i capital b when it is a small form of allelic form you are saying it is small i which is none of the carbohydrate is present in this case a carbohydrate is present in the a blood group and b carbohydrate is present in the b blood group now if you go further uh, you can start thinking about two possibilities over there when we think about uh, blood grouping or any dominance law for that matter uh, even if we have i capital a and a small i that will still appear a dominant trait or just think about the same logic what we thought for purple and, and white colors right or you have i capital a and i capital a that is also dominant and that is also going to show you the a blood type trait in the b blood groups we have i capital b i capital b or i capital b and a small i in case of o blood group we have both small i's and in ab we have i capital a and i capital b so it just gives you feel that in the blood groups we have on one hand we are looking at what type of carbohydrates are present on the rbcs which is a b ab or o and it is possible only one of the copy is actually dominant one of them is recessive is still it is going to show you the dominant property or in this case both have to be recessive so this is how in genetic terms you can think about all type of blood groups now what is interesting that you know uh, people can actually derive the blood groups by doing certain uh, reactions based on antigen and antibodies and interestingly we are going to perform that experiment in the class today shortly where uh, you know you can challenge biology and concepts that it always works true or not uh, if you already know your blood group and will take your blood group and will do those reactions and try to tell you what your blood groups are with a very simple logic of how an antibody reacts with an antigen and if that reaction happens then you will see some sort of agglutination or some particles will be formed so just continuing on this uh, let's kind of look at this situation where if the parents are uh, you know containing different alleles which are a b and o type and just imagine the way we have done the normal crosses so parent alleles are a b or o and then you do another you know so father and mother both are having a b and o alleles can you do that cross and then say that you know what are all possible uh, genotype of those children for the blood groups possible right this is how you will see so you can now find out from this cross that what are the possible blood groups of these uh, children so now some of my ts will show you 
how to determine human blood type based on a simple experiment. Observe each step very carefully. This is based on very simple concepts of biology. If you have this kit at home, you can do this yourself, although it is not advised to do that without uh, experts. Uh, but conceptually, you can understand and you can do this thing yourself and it is very simple which shows elegantly how accurately biological experiments work if you are looking at antigen and antibody interaction and those reactions are always so accurate. Blood group typing is a type of experiment in which we determine the blood group of an individual. Karl and Steiner discovered this ABO blood grouping system which is based on the fact that the surface, surface of RBCs are covered with glycoproteins which are known as antigens. So, according to this system there are four types of blood groups, blood group A, blood group B, blood group AB and blood group O. Here we are going to conduct an experiment in which we are going to determine blood group of this blood sample. This is a pipette and I am going to pour 3 drops of blood on this slide. This is anti A. I am going to pour 1 drop of anti A to the first drop of blood. anti B to the second drop of blood. And anti D which is used to determine the RH antigen on the blood surface. I am going to add anti D on the third drop of blood. Now I am going to mix these. We have to make sure that while mixing we use a new toothpick each time. In this sample anti B shows agglutination. This means the blood group is B. Anti B forms agglutination with the surface uh, glycoproteins of this blood group. Also we can see agglutination in the third spot which denotes that this blood group is Rh positive. So as a whole this blood is B positive. We have three antibodies. Let us say we when we add an antibody A that antibody A is going to react with antigen A. So in case of blood group A or in case of blood group AB we are going to see this reaction agglutination reaction to happen which is going to make these kind of particles. It will not happen for the O or the B. Now when you add antibody B, you will see the reactions happening either with the B or with the AB. So, so far we are not able to tell is that positive or negative, it's just whether it is A or B, right? So, that information you can get or if it is not reacting with both antibodies, then you can say it is O. If it is reacting with both of them, then you are saying it is AB. This is how you derive these four just by looking at the reactions of two antibodies. Now if you want to look at are the research factor uh, positive or negative, so you are adding third antibody anti D and that antibody if it shows reaction positive then you say it is O positive or O negative or A positive A negative, B positive B negative, AB positive AB negative. Now let, let us solve few problems based on this new concept that is deviation from Mendelian genetics. This section will mainly focus on problem sums which involves epistasis and ABO blood grouping. My TA will solve some of these sums for you, but please do try it out yourself. But before we proceed with problem sums, let us check if you have understood the concept clearly. Please mark the most appropriate answer 
based on what you have already learnt in the last few classes. A person having type B minus blood means he possesses which antigen or antibody? The ABO alleles exhibit which of the following situations? Ankita with blood group A and positive for rhesus factor is diagnosed with a disease which requires immediate blood transfusion. Transfusion can only be carried out between people with the same blood group. Three donors X, Y and Z visit your pathology clinic and request you to check their blood group. On performing the experiment you observe the following. Agglutination with anti A is observed in 3 cases. Donor X shows agglutination with anti B but not anti D. Donor Y shows agglutination with anti D alone. Donor G shows no agglutination with anti D and anti B. Which donor would you recommend for the blood transfusion? state which statement is true in case of ABO system. A person having AB blood group should be able to receive blood from donors with which of the following blood groups. Let us now do some genetics problems. A man with type A blood marries a woman with type B blood. Their child has type O blood. What are the genotypes of these individuals? What other genotypes and in what frequencies would you expect in the offsprings from this marriage? Let us now do second problem. Imagine that a newly discovered recessively inherited disease is expressed only in individuals with type O blood. Although the disease and blood group are independently inherited, a normal man with type A blood and a normal woman with type B blood have already had one child with the disease. The woman is now pregnant for a second time. What is the probability that a second child will also have the disease? Assume that both the parents are heterozygous for the gene which causes this disease.
So, in summary, today we talked about Gregor Mendel and how he formulated the theory of inheritance based on experiments which he performed on garden peas. Mendel described genes as discrete factors and how these factors are transmitted. They are characteristics from one generation to the next generation. A deployed individual must contain two copies of genes which it inherits from both the parents and each parent transmits one copy to the next generation. A trait may not show up in an individual but it can still be passed on to the next generation. We will talk about genetics and rule of probability in next lecture. Thank you.